We would like to take you on a botanical journey to create a keepsake journal. And I'm going to share how I recycle Amazon packaging into a botanical mixed media journal cover. Hi, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So this is an international collaboration organized by Rachel from Rach and Bella Crafts. I will of course link Rachel's channel down below in the description box as well as other links for this fun collab. Each week you can see the creation of different parts of a botanical keepsake journal. So let's start with our cover. If you're anything like me, you've had your fair share of online orders in the past months. <laughs> And maybe you have been collecting these stiffer envelopes like I have, and now you're wondering how to use them best. <laughs> so I think one great use is to make a journal cover because they are super sturdy. I get these kind of envelopes when I order things like maybe a single book or an ink pad or some brushes or, you know, anything that's flat, maybe some embossing folders or something. They will come in these packages here in Austria. Super easy to make a sturdy journal cover out of this. First of all, I'm just going to remove this extra piece here. We don't need that. And then I'm still deliberating about the flap on top because I kind of think it's cute to have the, that as pockets. So I think I'm just gonna leave that and then probably just cut out this middle piece here to make those two flaps but I'm not 100% sure yet I might just also cut off the flap and just leave the opening there but we have the pocket so why not just make that a fun feature I started off by measuring where the middle is so I've already marked the middle here and this is the only thing that really needs to be exact because otherwise your cover will be wonky because I do want to give it a spine I'm not just folding it in half I want a spine so I could potentially sew in like maybe three signatures so you can decide how wide you want your spine to be so once I had my middle I decided to measure a centimeter from the middle to both sides and then and this is something I do not advise you to do I took this tool here which has this pointy tip here and I took my ruler and I just kind of scratched it here where I want to fold it, but that really messed up the tip here. Maybe you can see it. So if I do this again, I would use a craft knife and gently cut it here, making sure not to cut through it. We just want to score it basically. Or if you have a scoreboard, that would probably work as well. And I'm doing this on the outside cover because you want to score and then fold away from your score. So then, I can just bend it like this and I have a spine here and this will be my inside. So that is a really easy method to make a quick and sturdy journal cover. So let's explore the option of keeping the flap. So let's make a flap here and a flap here, cutting out this middle part where the spine is. And I'm trying to kind of get the same angle that I have here on both flaps. So that means this is the part I need to cut out. Now we could also just fold this in, but I'm just going to cut it off because this envelope is so sturdy anyway. And then I'll just straighten this part here because I open that really horribly. <laughs> so now we have these fun flaps here for pockets. Only thing I'm worried about is how do they stay closed? Because you see, they always want to open because I don't think magnets are gonna work here because this is just too sturdy and too thick. Velcro might work, but I'm not a Velcro fan. A brad probably work. I can figure that out later. For now, I'm just going to keep them and I'm going to cover everything with book pages, including the flaps. And if at the end I see I don't want to keep the flaps, I can still cut them off. I have an inside of a gutted book here with some beautiful vintage German script. So I'm just going to 
tear out these pages and glue them onto both the front and the back using a glue stick. I'm overlapping the pieces so that I can then just bend them around the spine like this. Now I want to have a nice edge up here, so I'm going to take some more book pages and glue them around the edge like that. So once I have this whole side covered, I'm going to turn it around and glue all these edges around and then just cover this whole part up, just like we did in the front. Actually, I forgot a piece here. But that's not good. <laughs> so I just need to add another book page right there. I'll cut these corners so I can bend those back here and here. Here I'm going to cover the flap as well. So then I'm going to cut away the excess here for my flaps. And this time I am going to bend this to the inside. And then I also want to cover these flaps here. And then I'm again going to cut away all the excess here. So now we have everything covered nicely. So now I'm going to bend it. So this is quite easy because we've already made those creases before. And now I see where I need to add some more glue. This is tearing. Okay, we can always add more book page on top. This is why it's important to do this while the glue has not dried all the way so that we can fix all these things and repair them and then let it dry completely. So I need to add some more book page on top here. And we can see some cracking here as well. So I will add more book page on top of that. And I'll add one more down here as well. And now I will let this dry. So mine is dry and actually cracked again a little bit after I bent it again. But I think that's because I really have these old thick book pages that break very easily. I believe if you use thinner pages, this won't happen. In any case, I'm not worried about it because it's just a cosmetic thing. The packaging underneath is so sturdy that I know this is not going to tear through. And I'm going to cover the spine up anyway so this really is not an issue for me next i'm going to take some gesso and add that over both sides of the cover if you don't have gesso you can use white acrylic paint as well or another color of course if you want so while that dries i want to work on my focal point i'm choosing this one here which is from my boho birds ephemera kit i will link that for you below in case you want to check that out so this is in the shape of a large tag so i'm just going to cut that out and i want to make this a lot more sturdy so i'm going to glue this onto two book pages so first i'll just glue these two together and then i'll just glue my print on top of that let that dry for a moment and then cut around that in the meantime the front and the back has dried and the next step i want to do is add some stenciling and since we have a botanical theme i want to use this beautiful leaf stencil which is one of my favorite i wish i could link this for you but i got this locally from action i'm going to make some texture paste by just adding some gesso 
And then I'm using some starch. You could use baby powder or you could use sand, maybe from a hardware store or from an interior design store. And then you just mix it to the consistency that you want to have it. This is a mess. <laughs> This makes a lot more sense than buying a texture paste in my eyes because every time I do that, I don't use it up fast enough and then it dries up and then I end up throwing it away. And that is such a waste. So if you just make it for when you need it, that's a much more economical approach actually. I hope this will be enough. I'm liking the consistency, it's not too hard. And I'm going to add this stencil all over the front cover not including the spine because it will crack there. Oh, it seems to have the perfect size actually. That was actually the perfect amount of texture paste by coincidence. Now I have this line here. I can kind of try to smooth it out, but it doesn't really matter. I'm not looking for a perfect image here. I have a tiny bit left over, so I'm just going to put this on some book page. Actually, I just changed my mind. I'm going to add some to the edges of my tag instead. So this has dried now completely. In the next step, I'm going to add a little bit of color here for some more interest. And to decide which color I want to use, I'm going to look at my focal point and I could use green, I could use brown, gold. And I think I'm going to start off with some walnut stain, which I think will fit beautifully to this color. If you don't have Distress Oxides or Distress Inks, you just use watercolor or even acrylic paints or water-soluble wax pastels. Anything that is water-soluble will work. In my case, I'm just going to rub this over the back as well. Also on the flaps, the edges. And then I'm just going to mist it with some water to spread it out. This is such an easy technique and it's so effective. It's really one of my favorite techniques in the meantime. And then you just move it around so that it moves. And I will let this dry again. So this is what that looks like once that is dry. And I want to add some more colors and I'm going to take my water soluble wax pastels. I have the Carandash Swiss type. There are various brands available and I chose some colors that match the colors that I have in my tag again. So I'm just going to have fun experimenting, adding these. What I'm going to try is I'll take maybe some green and just rub it on here. This is more of a goldish green. I think this is actually called gold, but it looks very green. This is another kind of green. Let's spritz this. I'm just kind of mixing these, then I'll just dab it on in some places. Add a little more. and spritz it some more so that it moves. So this is what it looks like with the green. Super yummy, loving it. And next I'm going to do something similar with different kinds of purple. There's even a metallic one here. Not sure if we will see the metallic effect once we spray it, but doesn't matter. <laughs> we'll just have fun anyway. Mm -hmm. 
I want to use this beautiful piece of lace for the spine, but I don't want to leave it white. And I have this beautiful vintage piece of lace here. These are my two last butterflies. I love them so, so much. I'm going to cut one out and I'm going to dye that one as well so that everything will look cohesive in the end. So I will again add some walnut stain first. And again, I'm going to spray it with water. Oh wow, this is very <laughs> brown now. That was not intended. I guess I won't need to add any coffee to this. And then I want the purple on this a little bit more intensive. So I'm going to use my artist grade watercolor in purple from White Nights. Oh, that's very dark as well. That doesn't really come out as purple. Let's see if we spray it. Oh, oh no, that's coffee. Oh no, <laughs> I didn't want to spray coffee. I wanted to spray my <laughs> regular water. Okay then. I think this is going to need a lot more purple. Let's add some purple to the butterfly as well. Guess what? More drying time. <laughs> In the meantime, we can get back to our tag. I, of course, want to define the edges some more. And instead of distressing it with Distress Ink or Oxide, I'm going to use some very dark coffee. This is an espresso that I made with my espresso machine and I've had it standing out for a couple of weeks, always stirring it so that it doesn't get moldy. And I'm going to take a paintbrush and just brush the edges. Not too regular. And I'm going to go around as many times as I need to, to get the color I want. This is what it looks like with one layer. I'm just going to keep going. Oh, all this drying time. <laughs> See, a project like this can take you a whole day just because of all of the drying times in between. That's the hardest part about mixed media, I have a feeling. On the other hand, it's good if you don't have so much time and you just do like one step, take a few minutes, and then you do whatever you have to do. And then you come back when it's dry and you do another step. So that's two layers. That is quite dark already. Actually, that might be all that it needs. Yeah, I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll see if I need to add another coat. This has pretty much dried in the meantime. So now I want to add it to my cover. And then I'll just do the same thing here on the front and the back. So this has dried in the meantime as well, and I think it's fine as it is. I don't need it to be any darker. This has dried in the meantime as well. So I want this going probably like this. And I don't want my tag straight. It looks a little bit more interesting and dynamic if it's just a little bit off. But to me, it still looks kind of naked in the background. So I chose some pieces from my collage fodder that I think might go with the colors I have here. Uh, there is turquoise here, as you can see, which I don't have here, but I think it goes really well with the purple and the green. So I'm just going to play around with these and see if I can come up with something interesting for the background. The nice thing is that we have a little bit of purple here. And of course we have beautiful gold splatters. This is a jelly plate print, by the way. I think this is a good start. I'm going to glue my tag onto these parts and then keep working on that. 
so once this is all glued together I want to again grunge up those edges a little bit more by using my darker coffee I might add distress ink as well gonna add some splatters here while I'm at it I will let this dry so after the coffee has dried I see that I do want it a little darker around the edges so I'm going to take my walnut stain and distress the edges as well it's probably not going to make a huge difference yeah you actually can't really see it <laughs> So I don't think I want to glue this down completely. I want to be able to stick something in here. But I'm just thinking I, I still want, I think I need something else to go around it. One thing I could still add is I have this piece, which is from the same piece as the butterfly, and I've already dyed it in the same method. I think I want to add this down here. Then our butterfly is going to go here. It feels like it needs something else underneath. I'm not sure what that something should be. And I want to try it with a piece of this, which is obviously a sheet I had underneath, I think my jelly plate printing. So I rolled off some paint here with my brayer. Somehow I just feel these colors might work. So let's tear around this piece in. See if that would look nice. Might be completely wrong. I think it does add more character. Let's see if we add our lace underneath. Yes, and our butterfly. I think that looks more interesting. And I think it will work once I have the edges darker as well. Yeah, I'm just going to do this without thinking too much about it. Maybe to make this even more interesting, we could kind of crumple it up a little bit around the edges, just making some more creases so it's not so flat. Not a huge amount, just a little bit. And before I glue this part on, I want to add a hole here, which is going to help us to attach a ribbon as a closure. So I want to put an eyelet approximately here in the middle. I have these big eyelets here. Just need to check, do I want this dark one or this brass one? And I actually think the brass one would be nicer. So let's make a hole. Like that. Okay, then let's add the butterfly. And now we can glue it on the two sides. Or maybe I should, <laughs> maybe I should first thread the ribbon through. I have this beautiful sari silk ribbon and I think this color is going to be gorgeous. So let's just put that through the hole before this dries completely. Okay, now we can glue it down. And I should have done this before I attached this. That would have been easier, but <laughs> I'm just going to go with it now and use my walnut stain to go around all of the edges. And I've also decided in the meantime, I'm just going to leave these flaps open like this because I think if I would bend them back and forth too much, they would probably break as well. 
and it's it's not necessary you can just leave it like this i think that's cute this is the inside by the way i think you haven't seen that yet so let me ink this up change the look again a little bit I just love this here on the back side. It looks so yummy, don't you think? And of course, we can't forget the inside. Okay, two more things I want to do. One, as you can already see here, I want to add some splattering. I'm going to take my Van Gogh Bronze 811 watercolor. I'm going to add some water take a big brush because I don't want fine splatters I'm hoping to get a little bigger splatters I realized it's better if you actually tap the brush on the scissors rather than tapping the scissors on the brush which I always used to do it seems to be a little more control this way And then I'm going to cut out this tag, back it with book pages, and we'll add that into our pocket. Inking up the edges, of course. Backside as well, because this is a removable piece. You could add some gesso to the back here so that you can add some writing. Okay, this is still quite soft, but it will stiffen once the glue has dried. And we could use this scrap to make a tab on top. Just folding a piece like that and tearing it here. Then we can add another small piece of lace on top there. And I guess we should grunge that piece up like the others. Of course, it's much better if you know this in advance. So you can do it all at once, but I don't have that foresight. Oh, no wonder it doesn't look purple. <laughs> I got the wrong color i used this color instead of this color good job good job i think actually that happened here as well because i was wondering why is there no purple so i'm going to actually just add some okay once that's dried we can glue that on here like that and lastly, this needs some gold splattering as well. Let's just cover his eye. So this is our finished journal cover. Everything has dried. Beautiful gold splattering there. I just tied the sari silk around. Here's the spine. Here's the back. And we can just open her here. We can take out this tag. And here's the inside. And so now we could just add some signatures here in the spine. One thing I would do differently if I were to do this again, I would make the spine bigger, probably about double, so maybe about two inches, because you see what happens if we keep the pockets open. We lose some space here because of the way the cardboard just curves in like this. So that is, of course, taking away from our signature space. Definitely make a wider spine if you're going to use your Amazon packaging like I did. Be sure to check out all the links below to see who is next. So there's one video each day and hopefully you'll be inspired to make your own botanical journal. And if you enjoyed this video, maybe you will also enjoy the one where I made another mixed media cover here. Love you guys. Mwah. Mwah.